sincerely believe that we are we can serve god better whole sometimes we want to sweep our hurt and our past and things that we need to work out we want to sweep it under the carpet of dare i say faith uh, hi hi guys welcome back to another episode of the honey and milk podcast i'm your host bernice dowda and this is basically one of the coolest ways to be at because we get to sit with the holy spirit to learn about all things jesus through the bible through the scriptures and through our experiences um if you're new here welcome get seated get comfortable if you're returning nice to have you back i hope your week has been kind to you and yeah let's dive in, into today's topic so today i'm going to be trying to answer a question is therapy a sin because there might be some takes on this question some people are on the side of yes there is nothing like you know i really do understand that it is a declaration of faith to say that okay all things are cool and everything but i think there's also an aspect of that that is also not biblical that's why today we're going to be diving into that question is therapy a sin and then we'll do that by first of all breaking down what therapy is and then seeing if there there are scriptures stating whether it is a good thing or a bad thing you know if it's a sin or not so before we answer the question is therapy a sin i'm going to first be talking about the definition of therapy so that we kind of understand what therapy is actually all about because sometimes we just think that therapy is to do with you know mental health yes there has been a boom and a trend um concerning therapy therapy counseling for our mental health and mental wellness so yes therapy does cover that but therapy is a little bit more than just for the mental health okay <laughs> so what is the definition of therapy therapy is a treatment intended to relieve or heal a disorder so it comes from the greek language and the meaning of the words as the original greek words that it came from it means to minister to to treat medically and healing right so therapy is a treatment intended to relieve a disorder what is the meaning of relief actually what does it mean to relieve someone of something to relieve some to relieve is to take a burden from someone or to free someone from a tiresome responsibility and when looking into the word therapy in the sense of the medical term since that's majorly what it actually means like to heal a disorder so you also want to take a look at it from the medical aspect what do what does the medical community think about that word therapy right and it says it is to treat both mental or physical illness it is a tool that the medical community uses to re- uses to rehabilitate patients that is to restore to a condition of good health and it is also said that most of this therapy program use they use several sessions so you're going to have to not only come one time but to come over a period of a, of a period a duration of time however long it takes and and the goal of it is for you to be restored to good health to restore something it is to bring back its original shape or rather bring back to its wholeness or wholesomeness yeah and it's very interesting because therapy is really really connected or rather the whole goal of therapy is to bring about healing is to bring about wholeness it is done through several programs so there's also programs called therapeutic programs so that's um, physical therapy that's if you have an accident and you lose the ability to walk so that is you were able to walk before or maybe you were not able to work, walk before and due to some circumstances maybe through medicine or prosthetics or any other thing you're trying to regain the ability to walk 
or you're trying to gain the ability to walk depending on if you ever had the ability to walk and um it takes it, it, these physical therapy sessions it takes you having to go back and having to try and having to build that strength in order to gain back the restoration or the wholeness or the ability to use your legs in this example obviously to walk right so when we talk about therapy when we talk about healing when we talk about wholesomeness then in the definition of therapy we can already start to see a connection with the bible we can start to see god's mind and god's heart regarding that word therapy or rather the activity <laughs> of therapy and i want us to take some examples from jesus of course <laughs> Because that's what this podcast is all about. It is, you know, learning more about Jesus. And in order for us to walk like Christ, in order because that is the definition of Christianity, to be Christ-like. So that is why this podcast is very into learning more about Jesus. It is so that we are able to walk and be like Christ upon this earth, you know. Um yeah, so we're going to be taking the example from Jesus. And I want us to, because we're, th when we're not only talking about healing in general, we're also talking about, talking about the activity of therapy. That is to bring about wholesomeness. It is to offer an activity and offer, or offer a program where someone can be restored to their whole, like restored to a condition of good health, right? And I want us to take it from, I don't know exactly where it is, but it's somewhere in Isaiah. And it is where it says that Jesus was um, bruised for iniquities. You know, the chastisement of peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed. Um, that, that, that begins to demonstrate how Jesus' crucifixion, it is like opening up a program a therapy program where everyone that comes into this session comes into the faith of jesus christ you know believing in him believing that his death and his resurrection is um substitute like substitutes our own death and you know our sorry our death and our living which is why we're able to die with him and also live as him sorry this is a whole other topic but basically what i'm trying to get from this is that jesus opened up a therapy program for us to be healed for us to be made whole and there are also examples both in the old testament and the new testament of how jesus was very very compassionate about healing people um, another example i also put the scripture below is where um he was at a synagogue and there was a lady bent over and it was sabbath and the i believe it was the pharisee or the teacher that was there in the synagogue did not was not too keen about people coming to be healed on a sabbath because sabbath was dedicated as a day of rest where you know yeah the law at that point was like nobody should come for healing at that but jesus being um jesus actually <laughs> jesus being jesus and jesus being the image of god showed the true definition of god's heart regarding healing he doesn't see it as work he sees it as a necessity for our souls for our bodies for our spirits and there was a back to the story there was a lady bent over and um jesus called her out and started a story or a parable an example basically asking the pharisees that if they had a son or if they had a child or if they had an ox that had fallen into a ditch on the sabbath would they not go and rescue that child or that that ox you know from the ditch on sabbath and they were like yeah like most likely they would you know and he then says, then why is it that the this daughter of Abraham cannot be loosened on this day? And then he spoke to the spirit that was 
keeping her bound and he said that like loosened her and at that moment she stood up and she was healed so that that is an example of jesus not seeing our healing and our wholeness you know as work he sees it as a necessity for us ourselves so we also should also understand that therapy is an investment to our health and to our wholeness and actually i sincerely believe that we are we can serve god better whole sometimes we want to sweep our hurt and our past and things that we need to work out we want to sweep it under the carpet of dare i say faith um where we say okay i'm a new creation in christ which is very very true actually um but then due to the fallenness of this world there are some things in our past before we're before we are saved that tend to also mar the way we look at the world mar the way we walk in this world and when we subscribe to therapy be it therapy through men because the lord can also give the gift of men or therapy through prayer or therapy through any way that the lord leads you to um before we end this episode i'm also going to talk about how to start this journey or what to do in order to make sure that this journey is not one of just where you you get lost in it basically right but what i'm trying to do right now is to say that the or rather to show the importance of therapy therapy physically therapy mentally therapy emotionally therapy relationally the whole point of therapy it is to re- restore you it is to relieve you it is to aid your healing and your wholeness okay and then in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 when Jesus stood up and read um a passage in Isaiah talking about the scope of his ministry like that's what i would explain that verse to be he says that the spirit of the lord is upon me in order for me to heal the broken hearted so to heal the broken hearted was one aspect of his ministry and i'm just going to bring out two scriptures to kind of explain why that is a very very important thing to to heal the broken hearted so in proverbs 15 13 it says that a glad heart makes a face cheerful but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken and then to understand the extent of a broken spirit we're going to go to proverbs 18 verse 14 and here it shows that that a broken heart that the problem um yeah the problem of a broken heart is by saying that the spirit of a man can endure his sickness but who can endure or bear or survive a broken spirit so when your heart is sorrowful it can lead or it points to a broken spirit and a broken spirit can't survive or bear the grunt of a sickness which would allow that sickness to overwhelm a person so it can also be seen in our, in life and in experiences because there are some sicknesses that when you see a person that is cheerful or that is still of good cheer it tends to aid the process of health and um healing right but then when a person is very down and depressed and is just hurt it tends to slow the process of healing so that is to show that even though even with physical ailments right now i'm also talking about how we tend to also um focus on physical illnesses and neglect mental illnesses which is why the trend of mental health coming up is very important but it also should not be taken to the extreme where you allow your emotions and your mentality to cause you to collect sicknesses that you necessarily don't have 
so it is this it has to be balanced <laughs> it has to be balanced because your emotions are indicators but they are not the driving engine of what and who you can be okay and because of the obvious nature of physical our physical illnesses we tend to focus on physical ailments and neglect mental hurt but god never neglected that aspect he said jesus said that he was here to heal the brokenhearted he is very interested in you being healed in every aspect of yourself spiritually you know through he wants your soul whole and renewed he wants your body whole and you know healthy <laughs> and just as the health of our bodies are important to god so also is the health of our hearts Jesus is interested in your health and he is interested in your healing. Um, and one of the ways that I think I already spoke about that, like one of the ways that God can bring about that healing is through men. But I want us to understand that the goal of healing would actually come through the entrance of light, which is knowledge or understanding. So be it that the it uh, that's why i said it can come in different ways right you can find your healing by praying by reading the word of god and god can also help you to get a good counselor a good pastor that when you sit under his teachings it brings about light it brings about understanding that helps you to be loosened from whatever is holding you bound, be it sickness, be it um, strongholds or whatever, yeah? And I would say, like, if you're one of the people that um, just kind of want to breeze through life without taking the time to invest in your wholeness, you know, um, y you really... <laughs> It's like you wanting to put a band-aid on a wound that needs surgery or that needs su sutures, basically. And it's going to get worse over time. It's most likely going to get infected. And then something would happen that would kind of be like the peak of it. And then you might start to cry and be like, oh, God, why did you let this happen? But here is... I'm just trying to say this to you. Um, I kind of want this to be a warning to you that God wants you to take your time before it gets too late to start to heal that wound, start to go through the process of healing, start to just start. <laughs> That's the best way to say it. Just start, right? Um, but I'm not going to tell you to just start without giving you tips on how to go about this. Uh, because to everything, there is a balance. <laughs> so just like how when you're wounded, it takes, you won't, you would prefer not to go to a fake doc a doctor. You would want to go to one that is certified, that knows what they are doing, that is good at their job, right? These things, um, these wounds and be it physical therapy or mental therapy whatever you want to do it is going to leave you vulnerable and you want to be in environments that will help you and aid you than make it worse okay so i'm gonna say like five tips i think <laughs> five five tips number one find a good and trained godly therapist someone that is of the same faith as you you someone that is of the same doctrine as you because you do not want to go to someone be it mentally or physically that will that will open up your mind because the whole point of that place is for you to be helped and you don't want to go and open up your mind and your heart to someone that will not lead you to christ you know find a good a trained a godly therapist very important okay number two if you're asking yourself where can i find these people i want you to know that god has his remnants god has his remnants 
And in order for you to find these people, you have to ask the Holy Spirit for help. This cannot be done without prayer. Yes, there is an element of men, but there will never be anything without God. And you need to pray. <laughs> you need to pray. You need to pray. You need to read the word of God. You have to make sure that you are in alignment to Christ with everything you do. Um, number three, you have to commit to the process of healing. Um, just as how when they're banding, banding you up or, you know, like doing surgery on you, it's going to be painful. It's going to be uncomfortable. It is not going to be pleasing all the time, but the fruit of it is going to be good. So you have to commit to the process. Even if you do find someone that can help you, you also have to be willing to meet the person halfway or rather some way. <laughs> yeah, so you have to commit to the process of healing. You have to be dedicated and you have to be able to allow the people that you have allowed to work whatever you want worked out of you. You know, you have to commit to it. Number four. I think I already said this actually. This is a repetition, but it's worth repeating. You have to do this journey with God. Everything from the beginning to the end has to be with God. You have to let God hold your hand. You have to cry to God. You have to rant to him. <laughs> you have to, have to, have to do this with God. Through prayer, through reading the word, through meditation, through however he leads you to do it, through forgiving. Forgiving is a huge one. You have to forgive and let go of some things sometimes, most times, all the time. <laughs> So you have to do this with God. You have to let him hold your hand. Never, never let go in every point of it, in the things that you understand, in the things you don't understand. God is okay with you asking questions. God is okay with you expressing yourself to him. You know, you have to do this with God. And the last one, number five, very important. You have to believe that you can be healed. You have to believe that there is an end. You have to believe there is a there is a purpose to the whole process of healing. You have to believe that there is nothing God cannot fix. You have to believe that just as how God is very interested in your life, he is very interested in you being whole. He's not going to start something and finish it. Um, if I a uh, verse is even coming to my head that he who began a good thing shall bring it to pass in the perfect day i'm pretty sure i'm paraphrasing it wrong <laughs> but i'll put it below okay so the last thing is that you have to have the faith that you can be and will be healed okay right that's all for today please follow me as we bow our heads in prayer heavenly father we say thank you for this session we say thank you for the hearts, thank you for the minds, thank you for the people that you have led to this video, God. Heavenly Father, I ask by your grace, by your mercy, that whoever needs to start the journey of healing, O oh Lord, that you help them. Whoever is on that journey, O oh God, that you keep them on it, that you hold them and you never let them go. Father Lord, for those that have ended it, Lord, I say thank you. I thank you because you are raising your children to live a life of wholeness, to live a life of being healed and not going around with hurts, oh God. Holy Spirit, I ask that you continue to keep us with you in all of our ways, oh God. I ask that you continue to loosen the captives and to heal the brokenhearted, the hearted, oh God. I ask that for whoever is looking for a remnant that can help them in any way, Lord, I ask that you send forth your angels to bring about these connections, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because you hear us always. Thank you, because there's nothing impossible with you. Thank you, because just as clear, O oh God, we are submitted to you, O oh great potter, mold us as you will. Because you know the best thing for us, O oh God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Okay, guys. That's all for today. 
don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, follow me on Instagram at Honey and Milk Podcast. <laughs> Write me an email at hi.b at honeyandmilk.org. And yeah, continue living Christ, continue loving Christ, continue learning Christ all the days of your life. <laughs> all right, guys. Bye.